What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna get more in depth on the cloth and fabric creation add-on Simply Material. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Simply Material is a brand new add-on from the developer that brought us um, the other Simply add-ons. So like Simply Cloth, Simply Micro Mesh, Simply Wrap. And so like Simply Cloth, for example, is a great fabric generation and cloth creation add-on. Um, and then we've got other tools in here as well. But specifically, we wanna focus on Simply Material. Um, this is an add-on that he's created in cooperation with Daniel Meyer. And um, basically what this is, is this is a tool, um, it says fashion design, Design, really what it is in my opinion is the ability to add and create different types of cloth in your models um, so basically what it's got is it's got a menu in here that you can work with so you don't need to go in and do a bunch of shader node stuff or anything like that um, so it's got the ability to do like fuzzy cloth um, a bunch of different materials that are in here which we'll talk about in a little bit All right so let's talk a little bit about the way that this works so first off there's a couple different versions that are in here. So um, for example, you've got the standard add-on right here. That's gonna be the add-on and 50 starter textures. And that's basically gonna be a collection of textures like this that you can use in order to start creating um, your different materials. Now down below, you've also got the extended version, right? So what this is, is this is the add-on. It's got 800 plus additional textures and some additional fuzz collections, which we can talk about in a little bit. Uh, there's also an option in here for just the textures and the assets without the add-on, um, if you're looking for that. And then down below, um, you've got the ability to actually be able to resell textures that you create with this tool. So there's more information on that down below. Basically, the way that this works, um, assuming that I'm understanding it properly, which I think that I am, you can use any of the textures um, for com commercial use as well as your own personal created, but you can't resell those textures so you can't use this to build a texture and resell it unless you get that full commercial use option which is a little bit more expensive so just for using these in your models you're not going to have any issues or you shouldn't based on the way that this reads but if you do want to create and resell textures using this tool um, you're going to want that other license let's go ahead and jump over into blender and take a look at the way that this works and so it's actually pretty simple what you want to do is you just want to go in and you just want to do an edit preferences and you just want to install the add-on file that comes with this and you want to make sure that you check the box for simply materials right here and so simply materials is going to give you the ability to pop up this box when you do that it's going to install those initial 50 textures into the add-on folder so um, you're gonna have access to those inside of Blender. Okay, and so once you have the add-on installed, what you wanna do is you wanna go over into the Simply Add-ons bar right here. And so in this case, we wanna look for Simply Material. Um, if you have like Simply Cloth Pro and those tools, those are gonna show up in here as well. Remember again, this is for generating materials for this fabric. But let's say that we wanted to add a material, all you have to do is just select the object that you wanna create it on, click on the option for Create Simply Material. What that's gonna do is that's going to create a material that you can start applying your different textures and other things to. And in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna click on this option option right here, which is going to allow us to set our base, our micro, and our overlay textures. So this actually has a texture or a pattern applied to it. So we're just going to click on this button right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to add all of these different textures to this. And so what we want to do is we want to go in here and this is going to default to that directory. But if I click on this, Notice how that's going to default to the directory where those starter patterns are placed. And so from there, what we can do is we can select a texture. So let's select this flowers texture right here. And we wanna go ahead and make sure that we jump over into um, material preview mode so that we can see this. And it's gonna take just a second to compile. But once we do that, we can see that what this is doing is this is taking that pattern and it's tiling it. Right, it's creating a tiling texture in here. And we can adjust things like the scale. And so if I adjust the scale, notice how the size of that object is adjusting inside of my viewport. Notice we can also toggle these on and off by clicking the little I right here. And we can also adjust the intensity, which is going to be how strong that material image is on our surface like this. And so the base texture is going to be this repeating texture 
right here. But we've also got micro textures and overlay textures. Those are going to be the textures that we're going to use to actually set up our fabric material. So notice how this has a little bit of a fabric material applied to it in the background. This is kind of like stacking those together. And so let's jump back over to the Blender Market page. Basically, you've got a base texture, you've got a micro texture, and then you've got the overlay texture. So the micro texture is going to provide that higher resolution like uh, material detail. And then the overlay is going to give this more of like wrinkles or folds or other things like that. And so when we add the micro texture, you can click in here in order to select any of these, but notice how we've got some micro textures over here. And so let's say for example, that I don't want to have this micro texture anymore. I want this one right here. If I double click on that, notice what that's done is that's come in here and that's swapped out that micro texture in here for a different one. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to make this look a little bit different, right? And again, you can adjust the scale in order to make that bigger or smaller in order to make those fibers look a certain way. You could also select a different micro texture like this one right here and notice how that's going to look a little bit different. So then you can also use this overlay to add things like wrinkles. So notice how, for example, if I drag this up and down, this overlay that's in here is adding that wrinkled look. So I can also pick some of the other overlays in here. So notice how we've got other, we've got other more wrinkly looks in here as well. So a lot of these are built in and you can kind of combine them together, right? So this one, adds more like stretches in here on this material. So you can use those three and kind of combine them together in order to get different looks. So for example, I could go to a different um, texture material in here or base texture and notice how these are going to be completely different looking pieces of fabric or cloth. Now you can adjust things like colors and other things like that down below as well. So we're gonna go ahead and let's scale this down a bit, but let's say we did want to adjust the color in here. So if I click on the color option right here, what that's going to do is that's going to pop up options down here for different colors in our scene. And then you can click in here and you can make an adjustment. So this one, for example, say that I wanted this to be more of a red material or something like that. I can drag that over here in order to make it more of a red material. You can always click on use texture color in order to go back to that original color as well. And so one of the things I'm not liking about this material is it's reflecting the light a little bit too much, right? So it looks, instead of being like a soft fabric in here, it looks like something that might be a little more waterproof, like a poncho. Well, you can go into your roughness and you can adjust that. And so for example, if I wanted less reflection in here, I could bring my roughness value up like this. You can also adjust things like your specularity down um, in order to get a little bit less reflection on this object. So you can use this in order to adjust the way that light reflects on your cloth inside of your scene as well. So one other thing to note is if you do want this to be more reflective, you can bring that roughness in the other direction. Notice how when I do that, this is a little bit more of a plasticky look in here. So you probably wanna be a little bit careful with that one, but this does give you the ability to make that change as well. And so let's say we wanted to create a different material, something that maybe is like a little more silky or satiny, we could click in here and do the same thing. So notice how there are some more like fabrics in here. So if you do wanna create something that's more like a knit, um, you can do that. But if I was to jump in here and pick, let's say, let's say we were to pick maybe these flowers right here, you might bring in a micro texture or you might toggle that micro texture off and toggle that overlay texture on and do something that might be more like the stretches. And so then if we go down into our colors for this one, notice how you're not limited to just changing one or the other, right? You can change both sides of this color ramp node. So first off, if we wanted to, we could click on this button right here um, and it's going to switch these. So it's gonna switch the different uh, colors on this list. Or you can also come in here and click on one or the other um, in order to generate different things, right? So if I wanted this to be blue, but I wanted this, on this side to be more of a white, then I could adjust this over here to be that more white color. So um, you can adjust both colors in here on this material. And so if you do get that larger 
textures pack, you are gonna have access to more different kinds of materials and patterns. So for example, these are all kind of organized. Um, so you've got them in here by culture. You've also got like different art patterns and other things like that. So if you wanted like some geometric patterns, these patterns are all going to be built in like this. So if you do get that larger pack, there are additional patterns in here. Now note that within within that pack, there are a number of textures that were generated by AI. And so basically what those are is those are similar patterns, but they're AI generated. So you've got like your different furs and other things like this. And so one thing to note about those is those textures, um, you can use this. I'm not 100% clear. Um, it sounds like you can use them in your commercial projects, but you can't resell or edit those. So you can't use those as um, textures that you're created that you can resell sell. Um, I don't think you can do that even with the commercial plan. I'm not 100% clear on the actual uh, usage of those. So you may just want to be careful with those if you do get this larger texture pack. But there are a lot of like interesting patterns that are in here. So there's like wood patterns, for example. So if you wanted to texture like a floor, you could use these in order to do that. Now note that down below, there are other shading options under extra shading that allow you to do some other interesting things. Like for example, if I wanted something to look dirty, I can click on the dirt option. This is going to give us the ability to add dirt. And so notice how when I add dirt, right, I can add like an intensity of how strong the dirt is going to be. I can also adjust things like the color of the dirt. So if I wanted this to be more of like a lighter gray or something like that, I can use that in here as well. You can use noise in order to kind of set where that de that dirt is, as well as the scale of the dirt that's applied to a material. But you can use this in order to add dirtiness to materials. And then one that I really like is the hair. Um, he's got the word fuzzles in here, which might be my new favorite word. So let's say we've got a pullover like this one. So I'm just gonna create a material. We can go ahead and leave this cloth material. I think that looks fine. Um, but if you go into the extra shading and you click on the hair and fuzzles, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to add the little fuzz pieces to your object like this. And then you can adjust like the scale of the fuzz using this slider right here. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's using geometry nodes to create these, but I'm not 100% clear on that one. But notice how the little fuzzes are on here. You can also adjust not only the scale, but you can also adjust the density. So if you want there to be more of these, right? I can bump this up to like 1,000, and that's gonna generate a lot more of these. So if you're looking to create little fuzz pieces um, that go along with your materials, you can use this in order to do that. Now, note that with the larger, with the larger library, it comes with a different set of fuzz um, objects in here. So you can bring in your own custom, or you can bring in your own fuzzes just by dragging this collection in here and then referencing that collection. So instead of the fuzz geometry, for example, I would go with the fuzz seven that's right here. And notice how it's just going to reference that different fuzz and the little fuzz items that it's creating are going to be different shaped based on the way that these look right here. All right, and then if you're looking for a detailed tutorial on how to bake the materials, so you can actually like export those um, to an actual material that you can use as like a PBR material later. I'm gonna link to this video down below from the from the developer. It's actually a much longer, more in-depth tutorial. So it's like an hour and 12 minutes long and it covers a little bit of everything from your base texture and your micro texture um, to um, all the different settings, other things like that. It's a very detailed video and it'll walk you through how to export those textures. So I will link to that in the notes down below. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I'll link to Simply Material in the notes down below this video. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.